Good evening, everyone. This is Alamjeet Flora from the Wednesday Talk Show, brought to you live on Facebook from Sweden. Welcome, everyone. Welcome all our new viewers who are joining us today. We are here every Wednesday from the past four months. We have been very fortunate to have and host many, many uh, good personalities, discuss on various educational topics, bring cultures together. So uh, we promise to keep this journey going forward. So very, very happy new year on that front to all of you. You can like us, subscribe us um, on our YouTube channel, like us on our Facebook page and Instagram page. We are going to be there updating all our shows and events that are coming up. This year, we plan to do much more. We plan to get into workshops, uh, into seminars. And also, if everything goes fine, then we will be doing a lot of live shows, uh, which we had to cancel off last year. So those shows will go live with the live audience this year, maybe after June. So uh, talking about how our journeys are in life, when you hear the phrase, everyone's journey is different, you offer ponder upon your own. Because often, as humans, we are imitating others' journeys in order to try to keep up with our peers' expectations. I want you to be free of these tie downs in 2021. In the recent years, there have been so many talks on minimalism, sustainability and reusing. We need to get aware that many of these industries which we feel are attracted, we are often attracted towards as must haves or glamorous are actually contributing a lot to the environment's pollution. Many of those effects are now openly seen in the current world. It's time to go back to basics and also equally important to spread the word of humanity and brotherhood, which is in this social uh, media dilemma can be easily manipulated and cause a lot of more separation in friends, colleagues and families. I'm very proud that even when I speak such tough words, we have amongst us people like Mr. Amarjeet Singh Chawla, Turban Traveler, who is traveling across the continents and assuring us through their tra his travel stories that there is a lot more goodness than we know. He is now a full-time international road traveler known as a turban traveler. He believes no journey is long when dreams are big and sky is the limit. He is currently a on a journey since mid-November to 2020 to give tribute to the sixth ninth guru Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahab on his 400th birth anniversary, which will uh, com like complete on 18th of April 2021. He saved Guru Tegh Bahadur saved Hindus and humanity from Aurang Aurangzeb, who was forcibly converting them into Islam by giving the sacrifice of his life at Chani Chong in Delhi, which is now called as, you know, there's a Gudwara Sis Gan Sahab that is situated there. This journey of Mr. Amarjeet Singh has been telecast by PTC Network daily worldwide. I'm very proud to bring Mr. Amarjeet Singh Chawla on the Wednesday talk show. So please help me welcome him today. Sasrikal Ji, thank you so much for coming on our show. Vaiguru Ji the Khalsa, Vaiguru Ji Ki Fateh. Vaiguru Ji Khalsa, Vaiguru Ji Ki Fateh. So thank you so much, sir, for joining us uh, on your uh, journey. Uh, thank you. Uh, we would like to know more about uh, why you started this journey and uh, what is your mission? You see, in, in your life, few things are destined. Uh, you don't do it purposely. They are designed for you. So I never knew in my life that I would do this. I was just a simple businessman, uh, you know, and doing my routine work. At the age of 58, uh, I had a childhood dream to travel all around the world on a motorbike, so which I couldn't do at that time. So at the age of 58, I drove from Delhi to London on my car. So during that journey, I realized that uh, though that the journey was, which I did uh, for my own pleasure, for my own dreams, but uh, in the middle of the journey, I realized that my purpose of traveling is something else. Because when I used to meet people, they used to ask me so many questions about my religion, about my turban, and about Sikhism. So, and gradually, you know, it was developing. 
And uh, when I came back in 2019, uh, in uh, January, and, uh, and I realized that uh, the same year, we have a uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's 500th birth anniversary. And uh, from the childhood, I used to, you know, uh, hear the sakis and the stories of Guru Nanak from my, uh, my nani, my dadi. And uh, when I read about him, and uh, I found that uh, he traveled a lot. And then I decided that uh, I should do that journey to just give him a tribute. And then it took some planning and, uh, and God was, was very kind. I met so many people who helped me to make the, uh, you know, the, the route and uh, the itinerary and everything. And I started the journey. And when I started the journey, I, you know, it, it was just opening the different avenues for me. Uh, one by one, one by one, when I used to travel to different places and different Gurdwara Sahibs and learning about his preachings. And it changed my life entirely. And uh, after the journey finished in eight months, I traveled about 44,000 kilometers. I drove myself. Uh, my wife was also with me uh, to uh, few of the legs. And uh, once it finished, and then the another start, other journey started. And the other journey was uh, for Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji's 400th birth anniversary. So when I look back, so I feel that that first journey which I did from Delhi to London was just my test. My guru was taking a test that this guy can drive the car so many thousands or lakhs of kilometers and uh, and do this journey. And uh, and I did it. And if I say that I did it, then that would be wrong. I think I was blessed. Uh, this was my destiny. It was designed for me. And uh, now my purpose is to travel all around the world. Uh, there are 204 countries in the world. So I now intend to travel all those countries uh, on my car, which I'm using already. And uh, to go and to talk about our religion. And, uh, and Guru Nanak religion, uh, the preachings were not about uh, any particular uh, set of people. It was for the whole whole mankind. So, hello. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Hello. Yeah, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Hanji, okay. Hanji. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now something has gone wrong. Can't hear you. Hello. Hanji. Yes, you can continue. Yeah. So now I, I need to uh, travel all, all around the world, all around the globe and, and talk about Sikhism and uh, talk, talk to the people and uh, learn about their religion and explain about our religion so that's that's my purpose and that's my destiny and i'm full time for, for this job only now excellent sir uh, like they say you take one step towards god and he takes 10 more towards you so and that's how you. your journey uh, yeah has been so like you said it's just People just started coming and joining you. It's just the way God wanted it to be. So uh, great. And like uh, many of, uh, you know, the viewers may not be aware. Guru Nanak Dev Ji, yes, belonged, is the Sikh Guru. If I'm correct, so you can correct me also. But uh, yes. Sikhism was formed by our 10th Guru. In uh, yeah. yeah, so he yeah. actually we always, we always still the 10th Guru. We've always fought for uh, humanity. Yeah, that is uh, <laughs> so. I I wanted to also know uh, why did you take a road journey? You could fly and uh, you could take so, other. There there are there are there are two reasons. Uh, this is what I was inspired by Guru Nanak's journeys as well. Thank you. Uh, he when he traveled, 
his way of uh, communicating with the people was very simple and very smart. Though th that was the at, at his time, 500 years ago, uh, there was no aeroplane, there was no car. So and he decided to travel by foot. And some historian says that uh, whatever public transportation were available at that time, whether they were bell gardies or carts or whatever. And uh, in few places, he took the ship as well when he traveled abroad. So he, he used the transportation available at that time. And he reached to the place where he, he was supposed to you know, teach people at a certain time when there was some festival or there was some occasion so there were not many people were gathered at that time. So then he can explain them what, what, what was his purpose to meet them. There was no newspaper, there was no TV, there was nothing at that time. So he decided to go to a place where a lot of many people are gathered at one time and so then he can talk to them. My purpose was some, some way similar in, the, in, in, in one aspect. I decided to go by road. The, the, the simple reason was, at my age, if somebody does something different, you know, uh, and Sikh community especially, how many people have traveled uh, at my age uh, so long distances? I think very few. Uh, some people that told me told me uh, none, uh, but I'm not too sure about it. And once you go, and and this is what I realized. When I travel in my car, and, and especially in abroad, when people uh, look at me and they meet me, so first thing they see, who is this man? It's a white beard, having colored turban, and having a car which, which is full of signatures. So that attracts the eyeballs. So my half purpose is, uh, you know, already uh, uh, fulfilled. Uh, when when people come near to me and they ask me uh, who are you from where you are coming and what is your purpose so they are already communicating with me so once they start communicating with me so i don't have to reach people they come near me so that's and that's that's the very uh, unique thing in this whole journey which i found and especially when you go by car and then not many people in the world uh, they do not know in, in uh, besides the indians even I have I've seen so many foreigners also in the small villages in every place. They do not know that you can travel all the way from India to Europe. So they have a, a mental block. How, how you can travel? There, there, there will be an ocean or there will be so many things. So once they know that, yes, this man is coming all the way from India and, and that too on a car and that is this age, then they take you seriously. And then the press and media and everybody talks about you. Then my purpose is fulfilled. Then I, I when, when I go and meet people, then I talk about my religion. Then I talk about what Guru Nanak said. So that's the reason I chose to, to travel by, by car. There was no other reason that I wanted to make a uh, world record or something like that. That was, that was not my, uh, you know, uh, I, I didn't do anything purposely. So it was just happened. And when, when it started happening, and then I realized, wow, this is working. So then I decided, okay, whatever next I will do. So I will travel by car instead of uh, flying. And uh, here I am. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, not many of our viewers know that you have also come to Stockholm by car. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was during your journey from Delhi to London, where you covered yeah. almost uh, 30 countries by road. Yeah. So yeah. you have uh, uh, visited us as well when we didn't know. So we'll catch up with you definitely next time <laughs> that you're here again. Yeah, sure. so, uh, and you have met many ambassadors and you have conveyed. Uh, I know many have supported uh, this journey. You've got signatures from uh, even Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, yes. for on your car. So yes. you sh viewers, you must see his car. It's it's a very good looking car with such good uh, <laughs> messages on it and uh, such good signatures of all the renowned personalities. Uh, Indian Sushmita Sain and many more have also signed on your car. So yes. great. 
uh, you've had some great experiences uh, during this journey. Could you like to share if there were any challenges at, at any point you felt like, um, you know, you're getting challenged, whether you should take this journey ahead? Was there any moment like this? You see, uh, this kind of journey only mad people can do. <laughs> you, you have to have uh, madness in you if you really yeah. wanted to do it. And sometime in life, you know, you take, uh, uh, you know, some initiatives, and later you realize, oh my God, what I did! I did a big mistake. I should, I should have not done this. Uh, and you drop it uh, on the way. And when you drop it, then you you look for the excuses, uh, legitimate excuses. Well, I, I have this issue, so I couldn't do it. Uh, but it never happened with me. Uh, it was my passion. Uh, traveling uh, by road was my passion since my, my childhood. And uh, when I started driving, uh, I still remember when I was in uh, hills uh, in, in Russia, in uh, Saint Petersburg. So there I had some uh, health problem. And my whole left side was getting numb. Uh, so I consulted uh, my doctor friends and everybody said, that you should go to the emergency immediately and uh, and my visa was expiring and so the only choice was left for me uh, to and i already got my visa extended once uh, with the help of the ambassadors in in russia and only two days were left so after talking to my friends and families and doctors i was advised to cross the border and to reach europe as soon as possible and take a next flight and come back to india so I did the same. So uh, I entered into Tallinn in, in uh, Estonia and I parked my car and God was kind. So I met with a few good people. They were sick. They had a restaurant there, Maharaja restaurant. And I parked their car at their home and uh, came back to India. And when I came back to India, I was admitted in the hospital for a week. And then they scanned me from whole, my whole body and... Uh, I was uh, advised for the rest for three weeks. So after four weeks, when I was, uh, you know, given a green chit from my doctors, and my family told me at that time, Ki chalo ho gaya, bada kar liya. Uh, you know, jira shock siga pura ho gaya, un chado, uh, we'll get the car back. I said, no. Uh, now this is the indication that I came here with the, for the health checkup and everything is fine. And nothing happened seriously to me. And uh, now I will do whole. The, my, earlier, my, my car, I used, uh, there was, I, I, I written there, uh, 23 countries and 23,000 kilometers. So that was a time, that was a turning time. Uh, if, uh, you know, uh, my passion was just, uh, just like that and, and nothing serious, then I would have dropped that. Uh, but I, I was so determined and so strong. So when I when I came back to uh, Estonia again, so I opened a map and put it on the on the on my car, and my cameraman was with me. I said, "Look, count how many countries are in in, in Europe." So we had a Schengen visa, so we found there were twenty six countries. So I said, "Now I will do all the countries," and uh, out of twenty six countries. I did 25, uh, except the Greece. Wow. We, couldn't go because of, we didn't have a visa for the Romania. So there was a challenge, but I didn't took it uh, as a challenge that uh, it came. The, the problem was there. It passed by. I met with the accident thrice during this journey. But every after, after every accident, I was more strong because nothing happened to me. And I was wondering that what could have been happened and, but God was kind, but it, 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 nothing happened to me. So I was getting stronger and stronger and uh, believing that there is some force uh, who wanted me to finish this journey. And I successfully did 40,000 kilometers Delhi to London, crossing 30 countries. And uh, now <laughs> I talk about uh, 8 lakh kilometers. Uh, 2,204 countries all around the world, all seven continents. So that, so that's the passion. That's the madness. Uh, one should have it once you, you know, you really wanted to follow your yes. passion, or you really wanted to follow your dreams. Absolutely, very, very inspiring. I think you have taken this journey, but many people who, uh, like my viewers, if you have taken any other path, 
uh, nothing is very easy everything comes with obstacles it's only you know your faith that just keeps you pulling and of course when you keep your faith he keeps the faith also so that's been uh, that's been how your journey has been if i have to <laughs> uh, summarize it a bit um i also was like i told you before i was watching a lot of your videos uh, um, like you do uh, ptc punjabi he, they cover your travel so there was a travel yeah. you did uh, to lay and uh, it was very interesting to see that you not only covered the gurdwaras that were there um, but you also covered the temples and uh, you also covered the mosques you showed yeah. a lot of uh, information yeah. on them so it truly represents sikhism uh, you also went to this temple uh, which was which has a very interesting story uh, during kargil war that india was confronted with Uh, yes, I remember. Can you share that story of that temple uh, with our viewers also? Well, th that temple was in Kargil. Yeah, I remember. Yes, uh, that was some Baba uh, used to, you know, uh, be there. And yeah, and then people say uh, after the war, uh, they found some shells, uh, unblasted shells, uh, there. And this, uh, you know, this saint or this Baba was. calling people to clear up the you know the, that area and when they threw the bomb uh, in the in the back side there was a river so at that time the bomb blasted and since then whenever there was any fight or there there any war that temple was unhurt uh, unhurt absolutely unhurt and whole over the area in the city there was bomb shelling and they, they were getting destroyed but this temple was intact so i went there and uh, even army people even they were for, you know worshiping and they were, they were following so that was very interesting and then in there so many interesting things you know and in this all religion and faith they go you know uh, like uh, hands and gloves so uh, it's very important to have faith and and, and sometimes you know uh, you don't find any reasons there is no logic in it faith and religion so they are not based on logics so it's all depend upon your faith and uh, i i was thinking how, how this is possible that 200 yards after 200 yards there was all the places were destroyed and how come this this small little temple was intact but that's true it was and uh, i i went there and i witnessed that and i found and i talked to so many people Uh, even the army's colonels and brigadiers and the common people uh, they were telling me everybody was telling me the same story yeah and it is a uh, it is now i think a mahadev temple uh, a shiv temple which is there this temple this temple is still there i, I don't yeah. remember the, the exact name what was the name yeah but even I, but but it is some, it is related to shivji right it's like i think it was but there, there was a lot many other devi devtas uh, you know okay. uh, murtis and all uh, mm -hmm. that the temple was in the name of that baba uh, okay and that baba disappeared after that there was another story that they said after the war was over so the baba was disappeared mm -hmm. so such uh, such miracles also happen in this uh, yeah. very century sometimes you know they may make you think that it is true yeah and yeah i found it yeah yeah i know so in in your journey you have experienced spirituality humanity everything so uh, do you feel that humanity and good people i know uh, you agree that it still exists but any special uh, experiences you had which has really touched your heart any special person you met on the way and there there there's so many stories there are more than yeah, 70 sure. stories i met different people i stayed with them you know uh, but two stories i still remember they they touched my heart uh, when i met arnold schwarzenegger i never uh, you know uh, thought in my life that one day i'm going to meet him but uh, i fortunately i met him and he was very kind he signed on my car So when he signed on my car, I was thinking, "Wow, I am done for the day, uh, for the whole journey. Now I have Arnold Schwarzenegger signed on my car." 
but that happiness for momentary. Uh, I was in Denmark, I believe. Yes, yeah, I was in Denmark and the gas station. Uh, I stopped my car and there was a lady. He was, they were filling uh, their car and she came to me and she said, uh, are you guys coming from India? I said, yeah. So she said, can my son sit in your car? I said, of course, why not? So the little guy, uh, first he came on the other side because in, in Europe there is a uh, left hand drive and my car steering was on the right side. So he came on the left side and there was no steering. So he was a bit surprised when I told him that the steering is on the other side. So he went there, he started laughing, he started clapping, then he just go merry round, go round and round. And then I told uh, his mom that, can he sign on my car? So she said, yes. So he signed with his little fingers, NOVA, N-O-A-H. And uh, his mom, written underneath Noah and company drive safe and then suddenly this, this little child you know uh, he went away then I asked uh, his mom that where where is he where is Noah so he said uh, he's gone into the uh, in, in, in the supermarket and then when then she told me a story she said that my my son he's mentally challenged and uh, He's a special kid. And I have never seen him so happy in past eight months. And my eyes were wet and there was, I was literally crying. Uh, and I thought that it could be any reason. It could be my turban, it could be my car, it could be the right hand or left hand steering. But if I can make that little child happy, uh, that was the most uh, beautiful thing in the whole journey much more uh, fulfilling for me rather than the Arnold signing on my car. So that was one, uh, you know, uh, incident which, um, which I cannot forget. And that signature, when I, when I met with an accident, my car got scratched. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, that signature has been, you know, a little bit, uh, but I, did, I didn't repair the, that my, my car. I just have kept it that way. So I can still see his signature. And uh, that was the one thing. And second thing, uh, I was in uh, in Italy in some some small little town. And I was crossing Italy to France. And I had to stay there for one night. And, uh, and we book an apartment uh, online uh, from Airbnb. And that apartment was so beautiful. That was right on the top of the hill and uh, where was old uh, road, uh, silk road, old silk road. And there was a uh, church there, which was, oh, I think, over 600 years old church. And the road was blocked there. So I stayed there. When I stayed there and uh, the owner of the house, uh, her name was Paula. And... Uh, she came to me and she, she was asking about me and everything. Then she said, why don't you stay uh, you know, uh, in this house for a couple of more days? I said, no, I have to go because I have some issues with my car and uh, I, I need to get it fixed. And I called the part from India and I have to go to Nice. Then she said, don't worry, uh, what is the issue? Just give me the part name and everything. And she sat on the computer and everything. And after half an hour, she said, okay, Amarji, do one thing. This is the place you go there and uh, this is the guy you meet and, and this is the part I ordered from some other place. Because in, in, in Europe, my car uh, brand is, though it's a Toyota, but the model is Fortuner. So there is no uh, car name Fortuner in the whole Europe. So when they put it in the computer, so there's, there's no Fortuner. So how they can find the, you know, the, the, the part of the, the same car? But there are similar cars there. So I don't know, she managed to get me that part. And uh, I went there and then uh, those guys, they didn't charge me anything. And then and I came back. When I came back and uh, I asked her daughter, where's your mom? She said, we were staying on the first floor and they were on the ground floor. So she said, well, you go inside, she, she must be there. So when I went uh, to their drawing room, there was pitch dark. And then suddenly uh, the 
all lights were on and she had a cake in her hand and she had some guests. She cooked Italian vegetarian food for me. And that day was my marriage anniversary. And I okay. didn't know how she came to know about my marriage anniversary. And uh, I was just crying. I was just sitting holding the cake in my hand. And, uh, and I was confused of what to do. Uh, she was, that was an unconditional love which people, they showered on me. And I don't know what was the reason. And uh, but that that emotion was so strong. Uh, even if you're close people or your friends, or, you know, they, they would not do the way she helped me. She didn't know who am I. She helped me fixing my car. She helped, she, she celebrated my, my marriage anniversary. So, yeah. and these kind, and, and these kind of similars, I have more than 70 stories. Yeah. Uh, wherever, wherever I have been, people were so kind, and uh, nobody, you know, uh, asked anything about my turban. That you know, some people they say when you when you travel in some countries, they, they discriminate you, or they you know they, they make you trouble for you. But nothing happened. Maybe it's it's my gray hair. It's, it's a gray hair factor work, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> or my turban work, or I don't know. But the whole journey was so beautiful, so beautiful journey that it taught me a lot, a lot. I'm really fulfilled till here. There's so many experiences I had on the way. So yeah. that's the way you, you learn. And while sitting at home, if you don't travel, uh, you, you don't come across these kind of experiences. Uh, I'm not saying that for that you have to travel uh, the world. But even if you're in your own country, if you, if you get a chance, you should or you must travel by road. So if yes. you travel by road, if you see the countryside. I'd been to Europe so many times on my business trips, uh, most of the European countries, but I never went inside the Europe. And if you, if somebody wants to really see the Europe, they should travel by road and go inside and see the countryside. The European countryside is so beautiful. So that's that's those are the so many experiences I have here in my heart. And those are the good yeah. memories I will always carry with me. Yes, it's very true, sir. Like like you have uh, clearly said that actually life is made up of all, of all these small, uh, you know, memories that we collect. The bigger yeah. ones are always there, but, you know, these small ones add so much joy and they stay with you like for a lifetime. So I also know that it's not only them who have been so nice to you, but when I see your videos, I have seen how kind you have also been towards strangers, <laughs> towards people who have got stuck on the road, where you yourself are having so much trouble, you are still helping uh, them. So yeah. it, it's a big learning. I must tell my viewers that do watch his videos. He's very inspiring. You know, this guy is young at heart. He don't go on his age. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, you, you, you are really doing a great job, sir. You, and you, uh, we are having, very good. you know, when, yeah. when you when you help people, you yes. really feel good. Yes. Uh, when we were stuck, our car was stuck. People helped us, and uh, when people were stuck, then we helped them. Yeah. And uh, and not once, so many people. I still remember in, in India, I was driving my car, and one car with the family, uh, their car got broke. And the engine plate uh, that was broken, and the whole engine oil was drained out. So I hooked their car on, on the back of me and uh, pulled them for more than 150 kilometers and dropped them at the uh, exact the same car uh, uh, garage. And they were they were so happy. Uh, though I had to, to travel to other places, but I I uh, detoured and uh, I helped them. And uh, after that, uh, it was so fulfilling for me yeah. that if my if I am stuck with my family on the road, then who's going to help me? It's people, you know, they they look at you, they they pass by, and nobody stops these days. Exactly. Yeah. So, Very true. It's when when we start looking at ourselves and others, that's when we realize, you know, that we need to, you know, uh, use whatever we have in our hand to help others. So that's uh, really great. I'm getting so many, um, you know, uh, messages here. People are uh, finding you very inspiring and uh, very interesting and heartwarming is what Meenal is saying. Mangla says it's very inspiring. 
and a uh, lot of other good things. Uh, and Rani Aluwalia is saying, great achievement. Uh, there's a question from uh, Disha. She's saying that how long it took you to travel from Delhi to London by car. <laughs> so they want to know how. Yeah. Long. It took me 135 days precisely uh, wow. for the travel. Uh, but then I, when I went to London, I stayed there for three weeks. Uh, I wanted to uh, meet the Queen Elizabeth. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. but, uh, I, but I couldn't uh, met her, but I got a, uh, you know, an email from uh, Birmingham Palace uh, wow. saying that the Queen knows about you and your journey, but it would be unfair to meet one person at this time because that was a Christmas time and not to meet others. But whenever next you are in London, do uh, inform us well in time. So yeah. getting an uh, acknowledgement from the Queen's, uh, uh, you know, castle, uh, from yeah. the Birmingham Palace itself is as good as meeting the Queen. Even our Absolutely. Indian ambassador, she was new there and uh, she joined, I think, two, two months ago when I went there. And, she, and all ambassadors, there's a protocol, they have to go and meet Queen. And she got yeah. the appointment that was, we went, we reached there in London in, in December, I believe, the yeah, first week, the second week of December. And uh, the Indian ambassador was scheduled to meet her in March, so three months after, uh, you know, uh, when, when when we were there. And uh, so, so, so that was a great achievement to get the acknowledgement from the Queen Elizabeth. And uh, so, on the on in total, uh, it took me about uh, six months, four and a half months for the journey, and staying there, and then coming back. My car was shipped by uh, by sea. And mm -hmm. when I reached uh, in, in Mumbai, so I released my car and then I drove from Mumbai to Delhi. So altogether, it was 40,000 kilometers and 135 days. Fantastic. But you can, uh, you can take a sh shorter route also. You can reach there. But I always advise people and, you know, whenever somebody asks me, they, they want to, so many people ask me, they wanted to travel uh, by road. Uh, for this kind of big journey from from one continent to another continent it happens only once in a lifetime so you need a lot of ample free time with you don't rush and enjoy every single moment of your life every single moment of your journey so if you plan your journey for three months make it for four or four and a half months or four months and make it for six months because once you go there and you see some beautiful places you you love to be there. You love to enjoy that moment. And if you have a time restraint, then you, your visa is expiring or you have some job to finish back home, then you really don't enjoy that. And uh, we were totally open, totally free. Uh, now for, for my next journeys, uh, I'm totally, totally open. And uh, sometimes I also feel that how people travel on tours, because if they, you go by tour or take any tour, and then your itinerary is all decided. I, I do understand that, you know, so people don't have much time. And uh, But how one can do this in seven days, four countries, every morning get up at six o'clock or seven o'clock and then, you know, go, go into the bus and then take a flight and rush, rush, rush. How, how you can enjoy your, your journey? So then I always believe that whenever you wanted to do any road journey, do it by yourself first. Uh, I would I would not take any tour. I would explore it myself and uh, have sufficient time and, and enjoy every minute of it. True, true. There's so much nature has to offer to us. So, yeah, we better give it some time. Uh, we have a message from Amrita Pritam Karish. She says, you are an inspiration. Make us believe that dreams can come true. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so this is uh, what uh, the viewers are writing. I'm sure they, they're so inspired by you that uh, many more messages will keep coming like that. So if a, person, what... if a person like me at my age with a lot of health issues can travel mm -hmm. to fulfill his dreams, then you guys yeah. are young. You can do anything in your life. Yeah. So it's just about, you know, chasing your dreams and never give up. Never give up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's such a privilege to start the new year with you because this is what we want to do uh, by Pothos events. Uh, the Wednesday talk show is inspire people. Uh, many people ask me, why do you do the show for free? Like, are you earning anything? No, I don't earn anything. But yes, I love to bring people like you 
who can inspire others motivate others because this is something that we don't share much so all my viewers uh, be there always and thank you sir today we have gone beyond and i know there are so many questions still coming but we've gone beyond by like 10 minutes up so uh, thank you so much for today i would love to stay in touch with you and also you know be a part of your journey someday again so thank you thank you so very much for having me uh, for being here thank you sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you. So that was uh, the Turban Traveler, Mr. Amarjeet Singh Chavla. So inspiring. Um, I hope, uh, I'm sure I can see the viewers. I don't even hope, I know that it's been a great inspiration. Don't uh, ever say that your dreams can't come true. Yes, they can. Sometimes dreams are delayed, but not denied. So keep the faith going. Uh, next week, we have uh, joining us from Germany, Dr. Katrin Koch. She's going to be, uh, you know, she's a hormonal specialist and a naturopathy doctor. And she is going to be here uh, speaking on a lot of ladies, uh, women's issues. So everyone having some hormonal disorders, uh, questions on sexuality, things like that, please join us. We'll be very glad to share a lot of information with you. Be with us next week. See you on the Wednesday Talk Show. Keep rocking that 2021 and see you next week. Bye.